uh, obviously reading off uh, the wrong schedule. Or maybe it was the time difference, the one hour between Germany and, and Ireland. Um, my name is Lee McHale. I'm the office manager for Germany and uh, Central Eastern Europe. We're based in Dusseldorf. We have staff of three. Um, so if there's a delay, or ti uh, delay in getting back to some of you on some of your requests, sometimes down to the fact that we're spread pretty thin. However, exports to Germany from Ireland are up 30%. So uh, last year, 2010, was very successful. We're looking to build on that. Uh, however, in the big scheme of things, we're only back to a level of where we were two or three years ago. Um, exports to Germany uh, at that stage were up over the 400 million mark. Um, so the global crisis obviously impacted on that. Uh, but I would be positive in my outlook uh, for the potential of Germany as an export market. Um, perhaps a quick show of hands here. Are any of you currently exporting into Germany? Yeah, so maybe about half of you. Um, and for the other half of you, you're obviously interested in targeting Germany, either through marketplace or in the normal course of your business. I would use the resource of the other people who are already exporting there to speak to them, uh, be they in your own category or in a non-competitive category, because it's not easy. I wouldn't put Germany down as your first market to learn uh, how to export into Europe. Um, great dividends, uh, great potential, uh, but certainly not easy. I'm going to take you through, uh, just in the course of about 30, about 30 minutes we have, um, I'd just like to take you through a couple of slides I've put together about how to do, how to do business in Germany. Um, we do have market presentations uh, on the market itself, and I would encourage you, uh, as Terry mentioned this morning, preparation was a theme that was repeated. Uh, reading these presentations about the market, uh, re being familiar with the names of the supermarkets, knowing the geography, uh, if you're going to try and get a price of a pallet into, ha into Hamburg or whether it's Munich or, or Berlin, just knowing where they physically are, um, knowing how to pronounce, you know, if it's a couple of, couple of dots above some of those vowels in the German language, knowing how to pronounce the company that you're speaking with, for example, is a, is a good sign of you know, preparation. Um, because I realize that not all of you may have a German language ability within your, within your organizations. Um, and despite uh, how much we praise the <coughs> language ability of our European counterparts, uh, very often they like to buy in their own language. Yeah? Uh, they like to buy. Um, so you've got to sell it to them in their own language. Uh, they're a little bit self-conscious sometimes. Uh, perfectionists perhaps, but they'll tell you they don't speak any English. What they're really saying is they don't speak English fluently to the level of an interpreter. Uh, but my gosh, their level of English is usually way ahead of what, you know, what we might normally expect. Um, <coughs> in figures... 2.5 trillion. I know we've, earned, we've all learned what a billion, how much a billion is over the last uh, you know, couple of months and years. I just put that in there to show you it's a huge market. Okay. Uh, however, the key figure here, 3.6% growth in 2010. They're, they're unique in the sense that they're growing while the rest of us are suffering. Obviously driven by the, the huge exports into, into the East, into Asia, and when Asia is doing well, it lifts Germany. Um, but last year they had you know 4.6 to 5 percent uh, of a decrease you know prior to that, so they're, they're coming off the back of, of low figures. But it does feed into the level of confidence. When when you see this figure here, you know what is consumer confidence like? You know are they looking to buy? They will never surprise you. They'll never go out and blow all of the money that they have. Uh, however, when we are looking to see how the German economy is doing, look at versus how much they're saving versus how much they're spending. And what we saw in 2006, uh, at the back of 10 or 15 years of, uh, of tough times, was the level of saving suddenly started to dip and they started to spend more. And that was a sign that, and that's very good for Irish companies because our products are very often more premium, a little bit more expensive uh, when they're in the market, uh, whether it's beef or whether it's cheese, uh, uh, smoked salmon, 
uh, whatever it is, I mean, Kerry Gold, our most, our most successful export product out there, is the most expensive butter in the market. You know, it's one euro 69 for a 250 gram now, um, versus you can get a product that's 119 or 129. And that's, you know, that's quite a big variance for, for a general consumer. Population, you know, large, over 80, 80 million. Uh, the key thing to know is that that population is decreasing. So you're not going to get new consumers in this market. You may be able to expand your, your niche within a category, but overall it, it's dropping. And while that population is dropping, the number of households is increasing. So that's good news. Why? Because they're at very low birth rate, 1.36 uh, children uh, per, per woman. It means that that birth rate is decreasing and their number of one and two person households is increasing. Okay, so you know, four-person households are decreasing and the smaller households are increasing. So we're seeing an aging population. And we, see them, we see supermarkets gearing towards older shoppers. We see products uh, being developed for senior citizens. We see smaller quantity pack sizes. We see larger fonts. We see uh, a lot of focus on this older consumer. So just be aware of that going forward that whether it's a niche that you want to get into or whether it's adapting your own product, just by in the little, little I'm in Dusseldorf and just down the road, uh, there, there was a senior day, uh, it was on a Saturday there last week, it was their 10th, 10th senior day. So in other words, they recognise that they've got an older ageing population, they've got, you know, uh, an old person's day. Uh, and... Uh, Again, you know, we should just incorporate that into our thinking uh, and build it into our products. Uh, second largest continental export from Irish, from the, I've, I've mentioned that already. So there are a lot of companies from Ireland who are doing good business out there uh, and, and it's increasing. Uh, looking at the retail market, uh, again, you know, in the market presentation on Germany, we list all the, the, you know, the major retailers and we list the number of stores they have. But it's, you know, to, to really understand it, you've, you've got, to, got to go to Germany because... Um, if you've got an Edeka, which is a, a standard supermarket, they range between Edeka superstores, which are a fantastic target to get into because they're almost food hall, they're uh, exclusive, they're high-end premium food. Uh, they go to your Edeka Aktiv, which is a smaller uh, f form of the standard Edeka supermarket. And then they've got a, a discount chain. So you've got quite the, you know, you might have 16, 20,000 outlets in Edeka, but you've got them under different fashion names and different format types. Um, the retail market, 166 billion. Um, that food retail, retail market is, is growing. Um, it's, it's growing slowly, um, but it, it, it's a positive sign. Uh, some of the trends there, we, may, we see convenience. Convenience is continuing to grow. I say continuing because it's a slow process. They didn't just automatically convert to this, to this whole shop and go business. Uh, in fact, a couple of things were stopping it. The opening hours in Germany uh, were quite restrictive in times past. So, you know, <coughs> those closed on a Saturday afternoon, closed on a Sunday, uh, only open till six in the evening. Since I've got there, which is about three or four years ago, they've moved that to open till eight, open till 10, open till midnight. And in fact, there are some 24 hour shops. But what they're seeing is the, the, their sales haven't increased in the way that they expected. So they're actually coming back from, from that open availability. Um, they don't have the convenience store network of the spa, the centra, the corner shop in the same way that we're familiar with. Why? Well, there are so many Aldi's and Lidl's and Norma's and discounters within striking distance of where people are living that they almost serve as their local corner shop. People go there, they buy one or two or three products, you know, later on in the evening if they, if they need them. However, they haven't always had the range of convenience products uh, to feed this type of demand. So if we're looking for what Terry mentioned was, uh, you know, your USP, your differentiator, I would say, you know, the, the convenience uh, product uh, is one to, to look at. Um, and that feeds into whether it's snacking, into the very fast-growing coffee chains, uh, the chain shops that are in Germany. Uh, that's been one of the real growth trend areas. 
uh, or if it's the recently launched Keypack Convenience product, which is Rustlers. Are you familiar with Rustlers? It's the burger and the bun. It's a teenage guy, grab and go. Um, but when they were first looking at the market, it was, oh, where, where do we put this? And going into the supermarket, it was difficult to actually find where this convenience uh, shelf area was located because uh, there was sushi, there was cut up melon, there was uh, bananas, there was innocent smoothies. There was, you know, so um, this is becoming more established within the mainstream retailers. Discount sector. Discount sector outpaces supermarkets during times of recession. That's what they've seen. Um, and uh, discounters, you know, coming up to 2006, I mentioned 2006, that's when the World Cup was held in Germany. And that's when they really, things started to change. The whole confidence of the country lifted. The, uh, they emerged out of a long period of recession. Um, and discounters, until then, were dominant. Supermarkets, is there any room, is there any way back for them? Uh, but then there was. 2006, suddenly people started going to supermarkets a little bit more and discounters yeah, went down. And the people started to say, whoa, discounters, are they in trouble now? Is, is that a thing of the past in Germany? Over 30, 40% 40, 40 of the market. But no, then came 2008 and suddenly discounters were back in favour again. Now we're seeing that Reve most recently showed their results were growth of over 4.4% uh, within their supermarket chain, but their discounters actually had, had fallen back slightly. So even though the, the, the whole supermarket chain of Reve had grown. Uh, growth in organic market, I know we've got a number of Irish companies who are focused on organic. Um, yeah, 2 percent growth in 2010, so it, it certainly it got hit. Uh, when money was tight, they bought less, but uh, there has been uh, a reduction in uh, the range size of organic within some uh, retailers, but the value of uh, some products has increased. So it's kind of has balanced out a little, but we would foresee that to continue to grow uh, uh, in the near future. Uh, organic, it is, a, it is a huge market. There's a great uh, show, the or, or Biofac, it's in Nuremberg in February every year. If you do have a product, it is a good opportunity to showcase it. But again, it's speaking to, you know, Terry, you know, your logistics, you need to have your logistics sorted out. You need to come into that with a solution, uh, with all of the answers for that product. Uh, I know there's some people in this room who've used Biofact to get their product into Germany uh, and have been successful, but it's not overnight and not without issues. Uh, but going to that trade show, uh, and when we're talking about preparation, it's, it's knowing that you really should have a brochure uh, translated into German to give to a, a buyer. You know, you might only have him for 10 seconds as he's walking by and so he grabs something and it's, it's something that he can't easily understand and he doesn't really know what your product in, in, in your cart and he might just drop it and go. Okay, so it pays to put in that little effort. You know, we do help with small translations within our office. We can outsource other bigger ones, but doing it in time and early enough, it really shows that you're serious about doing business if you, make, if you go, to, to go to that effort. Um, so that, I would say, in organic, um, <coughs> there, would be, there is potential. Looking at some of the retailers, and just briefly, Edica I mentioned, you know, it, it is huge and it's growing. Um, Lidl, Lidl and Schwarz Group, uh, Lidl obviously discounted, but they've got Kaufland, which is a hypermarket. Uh, hypermarkets are a little bit under pressure. You'll see Real, that's a hypermarket over here. It's got 5%. Uh, it's part of the Metro Group. They're looking to maybe offload it. About 320 stores. Uh, they've underinvested in it, and that's one of the trade. One of the, uh, the in Germany, because of the discounters and the, the price competitors, competitiveness of the whole market, they haven't had the spare cash to invest in their stores. So the stores aren't that nice. It's not a nice shopping experience in Germany. Certainly not as nice as here, but it's cheap. I come back here. It's lovely. It's bright. Some music. Some tasting events going on some great local products, but it's expensive. Yeah? So it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a balancing act. And the Edica superstores that I mentioned to you seem to have got that balance. Uh, they've got it right. And they're taking the best of Western retail and incorporating it into, the, into their stores. Um, Reve, supermarket, um, you know, 16% share. It's, it's very progressive. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's, the, it's the dominant, you know, you can compare it to Tesco perhaps in, in, in this market. 
Uh, we've got a number of Irish products there. In fact, you know, looking throughout any of these supermarkets, we've got about 15 maybe Irish products uh, that, that would be on sale in there in, in, in a standard German supermarket. It's not a lot. You know, you've got your Irish whiskey, maybe one or two skews. You've got an Irish cream liqueur. Then you're moving to dairy. You've got butter. You've got some cheese, perhaps. You've got smoked salmon, maybe organic smoked salmon. You've got meat. Uh, we're increasing our presence in beef. Uh, you might have some lamb. You won't, you won't have pork. Uh, pork is more processing. And then if you move into consumer foods, uh, you know, you take your pick of a variety of smaller, you know, smaller products, but there isn't any dominant uh, category where, where we're strong. Um, so overall, you know, we don't have a huge branded presence for Irish food products. Where is an opportunity? I would say private label. Private label is growing. Uh, and I would look at private label. Private label is big in Germany, but, the but that's because of the strength of the, the discounters. What the other mainstream retailers are seeing now is that that is an opportunity for them to grow. So Metro, Cash and Carry has introduced uh, their fine food label. Um, and each, each one of these will have, within their brand, they'll have five or six different uh, retail, retail brands, and whether it's their organic line, whether it's their premium food line, whether it's their discount, their Ya, which is the, the Reve cheap brand. Um, but I would say, yeah, look, look at private label. Look to become uh, a supplier uh, of a, a more established brand uh, or an established company in the market. Uh, Aldi over here, you've got Aldi Nord, uh, probably a little bit more conservative. Aldi Sud, which we're familiar with here in Ireland. Um, you know, a major player th throughout, throughout Germany. Um, but again, getting into a discounter, uh, you know, the odds are stacked against you uh, because of the narrowness of the range. If they're carrying, uh, if they're carrying a range, they've got one skew. Uh, and you need to have a, a, a unique point of difference. I've spoken with the one of the head buyers there and they said, we actually presented to them a range of, I would say, 30 Irish products. Option either for them to do an Irish week in the same way that international food weeks within retailers in Germany is very, po uh, very popular, um, whether it's a Greek week, a Mediterranean, an Asian week, uh, a US week, um, a French week, an Italian week. There isn't anybody out there uh, up until this year who's doing an Irish week. Um, and we show them a number of perform uh, strong performing products within the Irish market in Aldi. Uh, we show them a strong number of products that uh, were unique and different to, to what we thought to the market. Uh, but, you know, we didn't get anywhere. And they said, you know, thank you for your, your offer. Come back to us, however, if in the future you do think you've got a product that meets or beats our present offering. Now, to meet or beat them on price, very difficult. Uh, to meet their demands on, uh, on quantities uh, that, uh, and order quantities, again, it's a challenge for, for a lot of Irish companies. Uh, we have had a listing uh, within a test group within one of the Aldi's uh, in confectionery, and that, that's going to take place. But you know, in my four years, uh, in my four years in Germany, you know, it's it's it is very few products that have have, <coughs> achi have achieved that. So what I would say is, you know, look the the, the bigger opportunities within the hypermarkets. Hypermarkets carry a, you know a much wider range of SKUs, and there is much more flexibility, much more in out. You know, they may have brand leaders within the category, but they will also stock other SKUs. So that is, is one of the areas I would suggest. Looking at food service, food ser you know, 166 billion for retail, you know, 68 billion for food service. Um, out of home food and drink consumption per capita is about 840 euros per annum. Um, they like to eat out, but, n uh, but not, not uh, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be visiting high-end restaurants regularly, uh, yet they do like to eat outdoors. So, you know, the, the Frankfurter in a bun with mustard, uh, with beer, cliche perhaps, but they do like to eat out when the, when the sun is, when the sun is out, they do like to either barbecue or eat at street festivals. Um, so the way to uh, supply these type of outdoor type events is very fragmented. 
uh, you've got a lot of small events that are supplied by small regional suppliers uh, servicing each urban area. Um, there isn't any major uh, food service suppliers into that, e that end of the market. Uh, however, if we look at you know, the, the top three channels that are you know, dominating over 50% of the market and, and maybe look at you know, quick serve, uh, that's a growing area um, uh, with, within the restaurant chains. Business and industry, again, a huge sector. I mean, you, if you think about the, uh, the catering that needs to be done for the large industrial uh, operations, whether it's a Henkel or a Bayer or a, an Audi or a, a BMW, these, these big places need to be, these have a huge number of workers that need to be fed. And working with some of the larger food service uh, suppliers into, into that area is certainly a uh, channel worth pursuing. Uh, and you know, that may not come about through a trade show uh, and most probably will have to be done on an I individual one-by-one one, uh, uh, basis. We have had success with a number of our fellows, uh, the fellowship program who worked in the German market, who have been working specifically for one Irish company and targeting the likes of these food service suppliers. Um, and speaking to them will we'll give you an idea. I mean, they're with us for about nine months of the year, and if they achieve one piece of business by the end of that year, I, I would say it is successful. And that is them working, you know, specifically on, 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 your, uh, on your behalf, pursuing that business with some of these, op uh, these operators. Uh, but again, as Terry said, they don't sign business on the, fir on the first meeting. Uh, and in fact, achieving a meeting with one of these German uh, food service uh, buyers is challenging enough. Uh, it is a level of personal relationship that needs to be developed, a, le a level of awareness and knowledge of the product, uh, which involves samples, which may involve resampling. Uh, again, with all the issues of logistics and bashed up boxes and late deliveries and products not you know, arriving the way they should, uh, to be overcome before you may get a meeting. In fact, there may be another series of communication steps to, to go through before you might get invited to the meeting. I'm, I'm looking, I see uh, Patricia Lynch, uh, who was one of our fellows last year, and uh, you know, if any of you do get, Patricia's now working with First Ireland Spirits, if any of you do want to ta chat about this experience, she'd be a, a good person to, 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 to speak to. Um, compared to many other Western European markets, institution <coughs> channels are high importance. So yeah, so again, institution channels. So there are food service opportunities there. Uh, in fact, I may, yeah show you uh, how some of these are delivered into um, with, within Germany. Uh, the cash and carry is, is very strong. Uh, we've got a number of major players in Germany, the Metros, Figo, Celgro, Edeka, Handelshof. Uh, in fact, we're uh, doing an, a promotion uh, with one Irish company within Handelshof. They're in Cologne Messe, where Anuga will take place. They've got a house messe today. A house messe is an important event for German companies. It's where they invite their customers. It's a trade event, but they invite their customers. So they look to have their suppliers present their products at this event. It's usually a one-day in-house or two-day out-of-house. It's in Cologne Messe, so it's, you know, it's a significant... They're taking one of the halls, Hall 4. Uh, but that's where Bobia can help. In other words, we help support on-the-ground presence for an Irish company at that type of event. And once you've got your listing, it pays to invest in this type of event because this is where you, there's an opportunity to, for you to help handle so get more customers for your product. Um, so it's again, it's making the effort and visiting the market. If, if the company does invite you uh, to participate in this, I would, you know, rather than put 5,000 or 3,000 euros into an advertisement, I would say, you know, invest the time in taking a flight out and being present at one, one of these events. Looking at delivered wholesale, uh, Reve, that's the same Reve that uh, we spoke about, the retailer, that's their gross Verbraucher service, uh, so that's their wholesale service. Uh, again, you know, you'll see them on the road, they've got the logistics, they've got the wheels, uh, and targeting one of them is a, not as a competitive uh, opportunity for getting your product listed, I would say. Um, these are all names that I haven't met with personally, 
but I know we have been in contact with them and we've got a number of Irish suppliers who are now supplying these people. Uh, Intergast, Como, GV partner, that's Gross for Brauchler again, Servicebund, Fearlender, David. So a number of these would be stronger on uh, Fearlender on the, say the organic side, uh, but all of these would be names that would be present at trade shows such as Internorga. Internorga is based in Hamburg, it's a food service show. Uh, for any of you involved in food service, that's always a, it's a, it's a good uh, um, event to, to visit. Uh, and I would encourage you to, to visit. I mean, th this, familiar, this preparation involves familiarity with the market. And you will always pick up, every visit that you make to a market, you're picking up and you're learning. Uh, you're meeting new people and you're getting different opinions, you're seeing new locations, um, and that is information that you need to build up over time. Um, then, you know, retail, because of the price competitiveness and the prices that the discounters offer, they are actually a source for smaller uh, food service operators to buy their produce in. Prointal is a company that, uh, they're based in Berlin, but it's a company that Bobia has worked with closely across Europe, and they've got a very good insight into the, the workings behind uh, uh, the, the setup and the makeup of the, the food service structure. So you may see them sourced as a, as a reference. Five must-haves in the German market. A good knowledge of the competitive set in, in the German market. And when I say that competitive set, is whatever your category is, uh, and if I might use the example of Virginia Harvest looking at flaxseed, uh, I know that they are familiar with the 20 odd, 25 odd flaxseed products in the market because they've done a category analysis on them. So they know the price, the product quality, the pack size, and the, and, and the marketing presentation of every other product out there. So they know what they're up against. And that's before they even go and approach a buyer. And I would encourage you, if you're going to be speaking about one of your products at Marketplace in, uh, in February, know the, know the competitors. And if that is getting a neighbor's niece who's out in Germany, who's living there, to go into a supermarket and find out the names of the products, well, please go and do that or ask us. Know the price, know the retail price. That's a start of backing into what the, you know, what the deliver price might be. Very often, it might be at that point, you might say, that market isn't for me if we can't meet that, pri that price point. It may be that you've got to reformulate and use an old pack size to come in and try and achieve, uh, achieve the, the target price if you believe that you can meet or beat, and not just a me too, you know, the product that, that is currently there. BRC, you know, uh, IFS, I've mentioned there, IFS accreditation for Aldi. You know, there are, there are certain <coughs> standards that uh, certain retailers request. Uh, but what I'm putting is some prior export experience. You, we, again, Germany is a difficult market to start uh, straight uh, as your first market. They have a very high level of expectation on professionalism and service. Uh, and we, you know, I'll mention that in a second, and I know that Terry uh, has spoken about it in your follow-up. That's where uh, knowing, you know, how to achieve business, having done it and succeed in other markets, uh, is, is very important. A deliver price to a designated uh, depot with room to negotiate. Um, because if, you, if, you, if you've got to sweat so hard to achieve one price, and that is the only price that you can work with, you're leaving yourself without any wiggle room. You know, what happens if there's an event and the uh, distributor wants you to support the house messa or an event that's going to cost another thousand euros? Or if you say, well, look, you know, uh, I want you to knock, fi can you knock five cent off it because I'm after getting a competitive uh, price from a, a product that, you know, they may, th they may well choose to go with. It's always good to have a little bit of room so that you can make the German buyer feel good about choosing you. Why? Because you actually gave him something back. You actually gave something off, or you were able to bend a little bit when he asked. Okay. Um, a German contact number for customers to call. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you're exporting to Germany, but they still like, if there's a problem, they still like to be able to dial a German number and not an Irish number when there's a problem. I've had calls from importers asking me where the truck is. You know, they didn't ring the Irish company, they rang me. Where the, where's the truck? 
It was Monday at two, uh, 12 o'clock and was meant to be there an hour previously. Uh, now, I can't offer that service for every one of you. Uh, I was able to ring up on this occasion and put the skids under the Irish guys and tell them. But uh, the lesson there, again, is communication and professionalism. It's okay to be late. There are times, well, it's not, but there are times when unavoidably your delivery will be late. But if you know that, you've got to communicate that in advance. Take the time, tell them. Okay? It may be a phone call. And certainly if you know on the Friday that you're going to be late on the Monday, tell them on the Friday. They don't like surprises. Um, that can be a local, a local agent. Your local agent may be that person. So again, partnering with the local uh, importer, distributor, uh, I would say is a favoured way to go. Uh, and again, it will offer the, that base in, in Germany uh, that the German business people like. <coughs> That's our number, and we're on the internet. Uh, but do be aware that board, board B offices tend to move. In fact, we're moving again in December. So uh, just be aware that sometimes if you get to if you look at see a number on the internet or somewhere and it doesn't work, you may have just moved office. I know Declan, you moved office as well there a couple of months ago. Uh, this will be my third office move uh, since I got to Germany. Some things to know. Uh, domestic food price producers dominate. They've got a very strong domestic food production. Uh, they're, you know... 80%, they've got great concentration of German retailers and they home produce. They don't need uh, foreign produce, <coughs> but they like it. They like the f their Italian uh, mozzarella. They like the French wine. Okay? Uh, they, will like, they like our products when they get an opportunity to taste them. Um, but do be aware that it is very competitive. Um, tender dates, you know, some of the major category product, product categories do have set tender dates and it's a matter of getting on stream with those. So you may be all ready to go into the market, but there may be another six months per, before you get an opportunity uh, to, to participate in a tender. That gives you an extra six months of preparation and developing that relationship uh, so that you can come in and meet uh, that tender. I would say, when you do, if you ever do get into a tender in Germany and there is a, a product uh, specification requested, even if you think your product, spec, your product is better and say, oh, sure, listen, I'm going to send this because I think, I think I'm going to ignore what they've asked me to give. It won't work. If, they ask, if a German buyer asks for X, you've got to if, give him X, even if you think Y is better. Give him X. But then give him an alternative and say, these are the prizes and this is, uh, this is the product formulation for this product. But I think it might actually even... You know, but give them X. If they ask for X, always give them X. One Irish company came back to me and said, we submitted for the tender and we haven't heard. And the reason why they didn't hear back was because they were way off, they were way off mark. And in fact, another Irish company, the tender, uh, they said, we want to reduce uh, the pack size by 20 grams. So the Irish company came back uh, with their revised tender. They reduced it by 20 grams. And what had they done? They'd increased the price by 10%. I mean, there may have been a logical reason behind it, but without any explanation, they threw this back uh, at, at the German company. You know, where is the logic in that? I mean, again, if there, is, if there is a reason, you've got to communicate that and sit down with the buyer and talk them through it and not just send, send, send this back in when, obviously, they were looking to have a price reduction uh, as well. Private label, I've mentioned that is growing. It can take 18 months from first contact to first shipment. Be aware of that. Okay. If you are looking at the German market, be committed. German buyers value professionalism and are good at accepting negative truths. What I mean by that is, if they ask you for an extra 1,000 units in three weeks' time and you don't have it, tell them. Don't say, oh, great, yeah, I'll have that. Yeah, look after that now for you and uh, run off then down the office or down the factory and try to figure out where you're going to get that product from. Okay? They prefer you to tell them straight up, no, you don't have it because of this, but you may be able to offer them you know, something, something close or you may be able to work around, maybe buy yourself another two days. And so they can accept no, okay? and they prefer that. That and food, 7%, 19% for alcohol. Looking at a marketplace, we'll be targeting buyers. If you've built up any contacts that you want us to invite, 
please tell us and we'll add them to the list. You, you're also free to you know, work in tandem with us and invite them yourselves and we, you know, we'll, we'll help uh, work with you in getting them over uh, uh, to, uh, to Ireland. Austria, I've mentioned Austria, I've focused on Germany here and I'm reflecting you know, the, 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 the demands that we get into our office, which I would say be over 90% on Germany. But if you do have any requests on the Austrian market, uh, we do have information on that, and I'm happy to, to answer any individual queries. I do have a desk out here this morning, and I'm meeting with some of you over the course of the day. Uh, we're looking at importers and distributors. They're the guys, they're the local contact on the ground. We have found that the major retailers don't travel. Even if we package it into one day, 15 meetings in one day, which is highly productive, highly efficient, it's very hard to get them to travel. We haven't achieved it in the past, um, so we'll be focusing on the key people who have uh, the contacts within the retail network. They are just, just as important. Uh, but we will, look at, you know, we will look at retail buyers because we do have uh, a good database, but I don't hold out much expectation of getting the major retailers in directly uh, for, uh, for, uh, from marketplace. Uh, food service operators, again, there's quite a fragmented market. There are a uh, big number of them out there, and we have had some success in the past uh, with these types of people. And I mentioned there were three of us. They are our contacts. Um, so I'd like to thank you all very much uh, for your attention. Uh, again, I'm here all day, so please feel free to stop by. Thanks very much. Thank you.